The Lord be with you. And with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When the people saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and crossed to Capernaum to look for Jesus. When they found him on the other side, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you co come here? Jesus answered, I tell you most solemnly, you are not looking for me because you have seen the signs, but because you had all the bread you wanted to eat. Do not work for food that cannot last, but work for food that endures to eternal life. The kind of food the Son of Man is offering you, for on him the Father, God himself, has set his seal. Then they said to him, What must we do if we are to do the works that God wants? Jesus gave them this answer. This, this is working for God. You must believe in the one he has sent. So they said, What sign will you give to show us that we should believe in you? What work will you do? Our fathers had manna to eat in the desert. As scripture says, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus answered, I tell you most solemnly, it was not Moses who gave you bread from heaven. It is my father who gave you the bread from heaven. The true bread for the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, give us that bread always, Jesus answered. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never be hungry. He who believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. In the gospel, Jesus told the Israelites or the Jews to seek for the food that will last. In the second reading, Paul says, you must learn to give up your old way of life. And in the first reading, God wanted to let the Israelites give up their old way of life. And that was the beginning of the problem. It is not always easy to unlearn what one has learned. Learning appears to be easier than unlearning. A habit once formed may not be easy to, you know, relinquish. The Israelites have stayed in the land of the Egyptians for over 130 years, probably have established there have got used to everything there. Some of them do not know their history anymore. Some of them who didn't enjoy or who never knew where they came from didn't understand why they should pack away from that land, probably where they have built their house and spent all, their, all the rest of their life, and they are now being taken away. Another thing that this reading, you know, is... Uh, is projecting is, why should God take these people through this length, length of times and of suffering and challenges? Why should he wait for them to cry for food before he, ga he gave them food? Why would he take them through that long period of trekking, walking, suffering through the desert before he could take them to the promised land which he made to Abraham? Where we, we look, there God sees. God sees a future in us. Most often we see a present in us. How many times have you called your son and you are telling your children, see what you will do so that tomorrow you will be, ha you will be happy a man. 
see what you will not do so that tomorrow you will still remain a happy man. And after saying all these things to your children, one will stand up and tell you, Mom, what are you trying to say? Are you telling us we are not wise? I don't understand you. How do you feel at that reply? You are seeing a future for your children, but for them, because of secularism and usefulness, they don't see what you see. God was seeing something in the lives of the Israelites, but they don't see that. They are only interested in feeding their stomach. God was seeing their tomorrow, but they were seeing their stomach. And that's why they shouted, why did you bring us here to kill us? Why wouldn't you allow us to die in the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt where we eat and drank? And drank? No one has ever got freedom in a platter of gold. The history of the world, check it, every freedom has always, had always come through one or two struggles. These people could make this statement because they didn't know what their forefathers suffered. Somebody like Joseph, how they prayed and prayed and prayed that God takes them back to their land. And when God eventually heard their prayers in Genesis chapter 3, he told Moses, go and tell the Israelites that I have heard their prayers. I've heard their cries. They didn't know they cried because they didn't cry it. It was in their time that God cleared their tears. At times, what we didn't know how it came about, we don't value it. That a particular company is doing well, is, you know, making it. Check it, some people are behind the sea working for that success. The people who worked for the success the Israelites are truncating in the first reading today have all died and gone. Most often, God takes us through a, a particular route in order to teach us certain lessons. And because we are human beings, we are limited. We do not know where God takes us. It's not always easy. You wouldn't blame the Israelites because they're already hungry. And anyone who is hungry is angry. And anyone who is angry can utter anything. But it is always good for us who are still reading this passage of the Bible to learn that most of them God takes us through a crooked way, through challenging moments in order to fine-tune us for a, the best of what he wants us to be. And while we are undergoing this crooked road, while we are undergoing these challenges, naturally as a human being, you may utter words. Naturally as a human being, if God is before you, you will question him 100 times. And it's possible he may not give you a satisfying answer because of the pains in your heart. The reading of today encourages us that in our moment of challenges, may we be calm and still, as said in the book of Psalm, and know that God is still with us. No matter the challenges, it has its own end in time. And I'm sure when their time came, when the time when it, it ended and when they got to the promised land, and who knows, they may have forgotten what they said on their journey, on their way. When success comes, Suffering is forgotten. Once you record a success example, a pregnant woman may be suffering for the past nine months. In the labor room, she's shouting, but as soon as she delivers and the baby is alive, she wouldn't remember all this period. May we ask the grace of God in this mass that the channels of life of challenge we have undergone or we are undergoing may strengthen us to understand what God is planning for our future. God sees where we are looking at. God sees our future. We don't see our future. And through that period, he takes us to a greater height of that future. May the challenges not make us cut off that future. If God had heard the prayers of the Israelites through Moses or the, the, the challenges they gave to Moses, probably they may have retained in, remained in the desert or have gone back to Israelites where they will, I mean, to Egypt, where they will still remain slave. Every freedom comes with assiduous efforts. Every freedom comes with industriousness. And every industriousness always comes with certain sweat. In the moment of your sweat, believe that God will still clear the sweat and bring sweetness.